Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Mercedes Viola. I'm from Uruguay in South America. Uh, many of you were here for Paul's uh, talk when he explained the talk about this project. Um, so today, actually, I'll be talking about uh, successful team teaching in this context, but it's not just any context, right? It's quite different, maybe, from the traditional way of working, right? Um, just uh, some background on, well, Uruguay is a very small country. There are only 3 million people, and most of the population is concentrated in the capital city that is Montevideo, that is south of the Uruguay. And so the other 1.5 is in the rest of the country. So uh, that gives us the context in which we are working, right? Then other important factors for these projects are the video conference facilities and connectivity. As Paul explained, fortunately, connectivity is working there. The government invested a lot in that. And the conference facility is not only just the, the equipment itself, but it's also important to know how to use it. Uh, because it has a lot of features. It's not just a flat screen. You're there delivering a, a, a class. It's not that. It's something that you can, actually you can zoom in and zoom out, you and the kids. You can share your screen. You can choose what to show. You can choose what you see. And you can choose what the kids see and what the kids listen to. So it also requires such a, a skills and practice in that. But that is very important, the class uh, delivery. I don't want to say delivery, but teaching, let's say. Okay? Then the platform, of course, we are, uh, they say, Valitas. These are the, the one laptop per child program. And kids have computers. The platform, the online platform, is very important for this program. Uh, last year, we had some issues. This year, we are the implementing things for you. Uh, but it's, very, it's a very important component for because you have to imagine that maybe remote teachers are working with many, many kids that you just see through a screen and you need to get to know them. And with the platform, it's much easier because they, you have the names, they can upload their pictures, they can post things, so you can follow them and get to know them much better. And then I would say maybe that is the most important factor is the coordination between the remote teacher, that is the English teacher, and the classroom teacher, the teacher that works in the school with kids, that most of them don't speak English, right? Um, so this relationship uh, is the basis of the program. It's actually team teaching, collaborative teaching. It's not just um, a word about well, I do something and you do something else. No, we need to work together towards this because uh, the remote teacher knows English, knows about uh, okay, language pedagogy, maybe teaching English, but doesn't know the kids, doesn't know much about the context in which they are, um, cannot manage uh, the classroom. Right? So you really work together uh, while the classroom teacher, of course, does the classroom management, but also gets to know the kids pretty well. So they can help you to, well, maybe Juan is having these problems, maybe we should do this and that to help him. Or So that way, it's not just something one size fits all. Because sometimes when we talk about these programs, people think that it's just something that you do and it's the same for everybody. No, it's not. You have a common curriculum and everything, but you adapt it for the different contexts and for the different rhythms of the groups and the individuals. Okay? We try to do it. Okay? It's not that you are always successful at doing that. So, as any program, yeah, and as any teaching experience, these are based on, in the context, of course, and the beliefs you hold as an English teacher, right? So the beliefs of the role of the teacher the role of the students, the role of the materials, and of course, in this case, technology. Um, okay, 
there's a whole debate about this in EFL, so we're not going to talk about that today. But those beliefs are the beliefs you bring into your class, uh, what you think your role is, how interactive you should have, all these kind of things. And you apply the same in this situation, right? So we can say that our main goal is uh, if it is a classroom a teacher, is to help our students become competent users of the language, right? This is quite an ambitious program. Um, so what we want the kids to be able to do is to be competent users of language, that they can manage, they can use the language in the future or at present and in the future, right? They can communicate, use, they can use the language to communicate. Right? Um, when you talk about being competent, it's not just knowledge, but in this case it's language knowledge. It's not just that. You need the necessary skills and strategies in order to be able to apply that knowledge to solve a situation, right? And the correct attitudes, right? So when you want your students to become competent in something, and in this case competent, communicators in English, you have to take into consideration these three aspects, not just language in itself, but the skills and the strategies and the correct attitudes you need in order to help your kids be able to use that language when they need it, to use it to solve problems. That's why you say, what is a problem? A problem is uh, you go to a store, you want to buy something, you give money and they give you the change. Well, that's a problematic situation. There is a problem, let's say. Well, we need to help them to be able to solve those situations in English. Those are many others. I'll give you a simple example. Right?